thanks everybody for coming out for another evening of uh, poetry and the arts. It's great to see everybody here. Um, Bojan's going to read first, and, and John Malillo will introduce him. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, and, and Logan will introduce him. And then Dow Strong will present, and John will, will introduce her. I have a bunch of announcements first, though, but won't, won't take too long. So upcoming POG stuff that you should definitely uh, attend. Uh, on, on Zoom on uh, Saturday, March 16th, we have Joan Metallic and Brooke Sani. The week after that, uh, the 23rd, in conjunction and co-sponsored by the Journal of the Arizona Quarterly, uh, it's a kind of book, double book launch. Uh, our own uh, Johanna Skipser is going to read, and Charles Alexander is another one of the directors of POG will also be reading. That's uh, time and location to be announced. And then I think our final program for the year is on Saturday, April 27th, and that's going to be an evening of poetry and music with Andrew Levy, who's a terrific uh, poet from New York, and Janice A. Lowe. All right, so uh, we're happy to acknowledge uh, really significant support this year from the Arizona Commission on the Arts and the Arts Federation for Tucson and Southern Arizona, as well as from poets and writers. And this year, like every year, we enjoy support from Chax Press, the University of Arizona Poetry Center, the UA English Department, and the journal Arizona Quarterly. And I'm gonna, we haven't done this in a while, so here are all our individual patrons and sponsors. Not too long a list to So the patrons are Charles Alexander, Gloria Giffords, Lisa Martin, John Melillo, Cynthia Miller, Tenny Nathanson, Stephen Salmoni, Marcia Sherry, Johanna Skibsrud, and Richard Tavener. And our sponsors are Susan Anderson Smith, Econo Textual Objects, which is Rekha Lutieres, uh, Nancy Jacques, uh, Joan Larkin, Hank Lazar, David Navarro, and David Weiss. Uh, you too can donate to POG and become a patron or a sponsor. Be a patron for $100 or a sponsor for $50. Please visit us at POG Arts Tucson or if you'd like to make a donation or talk to one of the directors. Uh, so if you're a POG director, could you raise your hand? Uh, the other reason for that is also we, we definitely aspire to be a safe space for, any, for everybody. If you feel hassled in any way, please uh, let one of the directors know and we'll try to address the situation. And then finally, before we begin, POG would like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we call home. Tucson, where POG is based, is the ancestral home of the Tono Atom and Pascoyaki nations. Please take this moment to reflect on how, in the wake of a history of violence and dispossession, we can move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Bojan Lewis is Dene of the Nakai Dene, born for the Ashihi. He is author of Currents, a book of poetry which received the American Book Award, and Sinking Bell, the work of short, the work of short stories that was published by Grey Wolf in 2022 in the US, and I think out just this week in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, on Dead Ink Books. So yeah, make some noise for that. And I like the design of the American version, but I have to say the UK version is just a little better, so I'm gonna have to take a little trip. Sorry, I had to go to London by Bojan's book again. Um, he's been a resident of McDowell and teaches creative writing at the University of Arizona. Um, when I think about Bojan's work, I'm always reminded of this quote um, that I had to look up so that I got it right, because I think about it a lot. It's from the 2020 nonfiction book, uh, The Man Who Could Move Clouds, by Ingrid Contreras Rojas. And she writes that um, to believe in ghosts was to know that remnants of a past violence return. A country that doesn't even believe in its own history cannot believe in ghosts. And yet, it seems to me that certain ghosts, certain violences, certain histories haunt this particular country, whether we believe to choose to believe or not, whether we choose to look away or stare into the reckoning. Tonight, whether you meant to or not, you find yourself in audience with The Reckoning, the work of Bojan with you as a telescope, as a microscope, as a doom metal drone fractal feedback squall, as bent circuit, as emergency exit, as subversive tercet, that thing that had to be made, and so it was made. We sink in to the dust and past and what to do from here. 
Writer and theorist Terry Eagleton says that if we want a different future, we actually have to get there from here. He says, there is, of course, nowhere else to start from. A different future has to be the future of this particular present. And most of the present is made up of the past. We have nothing with which to fashion a future other than the few inadequate tools we have inherited from history. But isn't it the work of poetry to take up these broken tools, to call these unhealed ghosts, to make something anew? This is the work that we are here to do, and we count ourselves lucky to have Bojan with us as we do it. Thank you. I need to hire Logan as my hype man. If I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a while since I've been uh, given a poetry reading. I've been touring on this uh, book of short stories. Uh, pretty, pretty, a lot, hey, that's the word I'm looking for, a lot. Um, so it's, yeah, cool to come back to poems. I wasn't sure what I was going to read, um, but I think I'm just going to read something from Currents, um, to sort of something that thematically segues into the new work. Uh, I'm working on a new book. It's called Poems at the Moment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I think I'm halfway. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited about the new work. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, just like I didn't know what I was doing when I wrote Currents. But it all you know, sort of comes together. Uh, I have some copies of Currents for sale, and I brought some copies of Sinking Bell. I uh, have some guitar picks that I designed and a Spotify code for a playlist that I made for Sinking Bell. Um, it's all metal and noise, so <laughs> eh, beware. Okay, this poem is the first poem in current, and it's called Breach, and it's set in Sit <laughs> Sitka, Alaska. It's years I've been recovered, parents gone the way of worms, mom alone, her own decision. Dad, how he was always asphyxiated until rolled over. The frontier I'm abandoned to, exposed root rib cages above ground, rained on so much there's no dust, no blow away, traceless surfaces. With a single bag and one way ticket, I rented the first found available three bedroom, living, kitchen, dining. Filled it with myself, everyone empty except where I slept. Girls I had over and fucked to the floor, left sobered mostly offered other times at their places later. I accepted, then abandoned, fixed at the clinic. This high north, though not freezing, an island settlement cut off the coast. Pines, spruce, and chaotic undergrowth rise up along the crescent of mountains open toward the ocean. Rain more sky than the sky is sky. I'm not home, less interested in finding it, hours from the mainland. On an outlying island, red deer wait out hunters, tracking shit steam for rifle crack. Otters cut away, supine through water, to, hu to humans hypothermic. The turned engines skip on sucking mud signals, the goddamn day's done. Across the still cobalt inlet, carrions line the bald rim of a sundowner volcano. Glaciers imagined against the sea heaven horizon melt when fog lifts and mist shots echo, fade into the tree line. Casings mimic pebbles. Anger defines me here, in what's seen in pictures as pristine beauty, untouched by man's dirty finger, dad's belched regrets, mama's frustrated, unspoken hurt. I want recompense, solitude and forgiveness as distance, nourishment sought, cited, and put down. Where welding fails, release hollers out the soon to be empty space, a continent, a levee. What rises, takes, ice given heat like a child, spread with hands telling quiet. Ocean hefted over stern deflates my ill posture, gone life drunk, so drowned in drink nobody wants to want me. Rare dad shouted out by moms, get, don't feed us, sink, be eaten. Jonah's a lucky fuck, bow held and undigested, dumb animal him, swallowed entire in warmer water. I don't believe he escaped. He's down in there still, hung from the beast spine, feet eaten, body untouched. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of tier sets in this. It's all based in like um, 
syllable syllabics of threes and stuff. Uh, I used to work as an electrician, so that came from just a basic circuit. So it's pretty much just like a like I wired a house uh, in this book. Um, yeah, I became obsessed with threes. Also played music, um, so it's really awesome to be reading <laughs> with Dao. Uh, intimidating as well. Um, and uh, I'm a little, I was a little more classically trained, so I feel like I know too much to be too self-conscious. You know? um, I like know too much music theory, so <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Anyway, that's current. Uh, maybe I'll go back to it. Um, maybe not. My dad did draw the cover, uh, not for the book. It just, he just, he's an artist. Maybe that's where I get this artistic sensibility. But uh, so it's cool to like. Collab have collaborated unintentionally with him. Um, now he's always like, hey, you need a book cover? Like, <laughs> Shit, I gotta write more books, I guess. I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is from Poems. <laughs> um, I write a lot in form. Um, I think because, you know, I write a, a, about a lot of uh, tough material about addiction, abuse, and, you know, all the shit that makes us artists, I suppose. Um, um, and having a container helps me harness those difficult emotions. Um, and I didn't really realize I was doing that until I saw a reading with uh, Angel Nafis, and they said that about using form, and I was like, oh. oh. And then so, like, actually once I heard that, my process has sort of sped up. Um, it was interesting. Even though I write slow, I only like write five or seven syllables a day. Um, I'm also a parent, so um, that this sort of practice has been really interesting because it does it creates a tension when, within you. Um, because you know the impulse is to finish the work, to to get out what you want to say. But if you stop at five or seven, for example, then you just sit with it until the next time you sit down to write, and something new happens in that space. So I'm really interested in that constraint. Um, uh, you know, parenthood can feel constraining, addiction is definitely constraining, recovery is definitely constraining um, and isolating, so that's sort of like the, I guess, embodied practice of all that. Um, so I've been writing a lot in the Huzzle form, which is an Arabic and Urdu form, it's a very old form. Uh, I'm really interested in non-Western forms at the moment. And I've also been uh, combining, combining it with haiku, so in most of these, uh, each line of the um, huzzle is a haiku, and the huzzle is made up of five or more couplets. So essentially there's 12 poems here, right? Uh, so it's that amplification via constraint, via distillation, I don't know. Um, so, these don't have titles, so I'm just going to read, right? They have numbers at the moment, but I don't, they're not, they're arbitrary at this point. Okay. I'm still in teacher mode, I was like, is there any questions? <laughs> anybody, anybody get the handout? <laughs> I do have one, if you want. <laughs> anyway. Dandelions will go, God, ah. Dandelions wilt while God hangs in the closet, bright sun this morning, ashy knees and prayers, a chipped hatchet bruising logs, no warmth this morning. Palo Verdes dusts the ground with yellow pollen, much like yellow cake dusted my mother's eyes and lungs on Dineta. Blue skin, blue morning. The day the towers fell, white folks wanted to kill anyone darker than Bible pages or have an immaculate, endless day's morning. Wind rippled river, uranium beads stranded across city streets. Maybe when we're dead, forgotten graves marked with stones resurrect morning. The dogs in hospice, coniferous volcanoes sleeping the long sleep. A bell claims, birds fly. Violence visits my mind. Heat, hate, next morning. The blues got me, love. Ignore my pleas to ignore me. Please say more. Say more. Who planted this fight? Cactus blossoms, a late frost each year. 
each morning. Uh, so the big thing about the huzzle is there is a, a, a refrain, if you can hear it. Right? Um, and what kind of interested me in that was, you know, it's communal uh, when they're, you know, traditionally when they were performed, the audience anticipates the refrain and would shout it out with the poet. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> Uh, but something to think about. Do it inside. <laughs> um, and also I came to this form when I was uh, teaching a 6-6 load before I came to this university. Um, it can't be done. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't recommend it. <laughs> but yeah, my wife is like, listen, you're not writing, you're real cranky, here's, a, here's some homework. Like, shut up. <laughs> so I started writing puzzles instead of, you know, complaining to her. Um, she, she's got my back, it's good. So give me homework. Haven't taken it to the head for a minute on another three-day bender, slept past sunrise, and then another. The bed has softened over the years, the stoop steps chipped, shanties clogged memory. Was it your most recent love, or another? Bangladesh is continually interrogated by floods, you tell me. Your reflection of mist, the mist of shadow, the shadow of some other. Cracked clay riverbeds sound like a cross between square and sawtooth waves. Always we want the frequency to be another. Late last night the house made a drawing of itself, bone, skin, and a hat. It preferred famine over feast. Liar, it consumed another. Dear sound wave, while sobriety arpeggiates, is reshaped by blurring filters, don't think too much of any of us. This dissonance becomes another. Mouthful of raven's bones, eyes black beaks. On our exhausted bellies, we umbilicus to earth. 54 millimeter bullets light up our backs, exit our bellies. Pre-K, St. Michael's, Arizona. Nuns, black scapular and white cowl, shunt milk blood prayers down constricted throats, gurgling cramped bellies. Cienega Amarilla, St. Poverty, St. Piety, rich with church flesh, give moral accoutrement and see death daisy garlands with starving bellies. Tsehotso, pillows, drool stained, stuffed in cubbies, the body moldy bread, an aspirant summons his penis, signum crucis, across our bellies. My memory built against a hill, descending dark corridors, Dios no existe, poetry of broken sun swallowed by a scoundrel, the ruins of our bellies. Shemato shije'e, I am well, the mirror between us dismembers nostalgia, dull green meadows yellow, blossoms blurring silent stalkers on their bellies. Long, humid day off, sun's contour of rise and set, gray steam of coffee. Dawn brings drunks asking for water, better yet booze, there's just coffee. As for my surly ants, their warmth is received when you sit on a log, say your name twice, grip their weathered hands, pour the hot kettle of coffee. Light under the door, dulled noise of sitcoms, the rain. Thunder, a mountain. The pines will exude dark aromas, vanilla broken by coffee. Child's recollections. Dad has cold hands on her back, the warmth of the knit sweater put over her skin, a delicate shield scalded red, coffee. The gah call of crows, a murder on power lines, the sky ripped with wire. Any chance to dream through torrents of night sweats, screaming grind of coffee. Shadeja, I call, your number disconnected. Anyway, I leave a message. Can we meet, or are you dead? I'll wait for you with coffee. Um, so this form has just been doing weird things for me. Um, so now I'm just like, Maybe there's two line poems, one line poems. Um, you know, I think about 
arpeggio sequences across and sort of how that would look in terms of a, a meter. Um, like I'm just like kind of lusting after this mood pedal on Dallas board right here. So like, better watch me. These things are, you know, nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I play a lot of music and I haven't, um, you know, I compose music as well. Uh, and I'm just beginning to sort of combine these things. Um, like I said, I know too much, so then I feel like there are rules and I have to follow them. But, um, here's this one. Night, I return rage. Your fear, your fear soils the couch, thinks mom won't come home. Or I disappear on your first bus ride, smiling, the windows blur home. My daughter sings now, her lyrics outdone by wind. I long to know them. Beyond the window, Cars exhale over road. There's no knowing them. Also, I've been writing these without editing them. <laughs> uh, I have to go do that later. I'm actually doing it now as I'm reading them, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and, and some of these I've just I've not even read before. <laughs> so if I'm stumbling, that's like, yeah, it's the first time I've seen them in a while. And I'm learning, I'm seeing that there's a lot of windows and blurry, anyway. A light in a window reflected in a window. Late winter dust swirls with hungry ghosts. My toddler puts two toys to bed, says goodnight. At her age, mine was a kissing fight, not play. Can you remember snow days? Kept home with a kerosene heater and blanket houses. Strangers at the front door turned to smoke. Both homes burning with force, silence, and lay. I'm thinking of the deep canyons my sister wanders with her unborn child, the bones of the father bundled, slung across her back, asking, stay, please stay. I regret it now, my disregard for the body containing the current of a heart, short-circuiting. For now, I've killed a rattlesnake on fall's last hot day. Chiche was tall, slim, needed only the love for his woman and what killed him. There's a photo. He wears a mustard shirt next to my copula, all some way. My parents and I don't know one another. We respect our places in the universe. Deep in my mother's blood is a kopeck tree. My father's a witch elm. Both decay. So I've been playing with the refrain and the rhyme and, you know, um, really just trying to make a, like a poem that's really long. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking like 60 couplets, but I usually give up at six. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, maybe this will be the last one, I don't know. This is the most recent one, it's like I just finished this, I don't know, a month ago. Um, and then, you know, I'm finishing something else. From the hills, city lights flower, marigold and ochre, drowned by the dark sky and clouds pushed by autumn winds, shivering and drowning. If I look back to the hotel pool where my mother and I nearly drowned together, Phoenix sun opening the cement, I see both of our futures. My heart skips a beat watching my daughter wait her turn to drown in a plastic, in a pit of plastic balls. It's all pretend, spider threads as sutures. Alone on a flight again, wind screaming against the hull drowns out baby cries, drowns out babies crying for what their parents don't know, thrum of their touch. Near the sandbox, the kids fill a red wagon filled with hose water and drowns her action figures and cars only to revive them. She doesn't ask for much. Alone for 10 nights, a father looks out over his city it, imagines it drowned by the dumb heat of human vanity, coyotes yip, a dog barks. At the store, I lose my patience, growling, then barking silence into the car. Shit sits, stares, evening sinks, she learns, barked. How do I write, I keep thinking, without anger, 
or yowling barks, as if the heat's gone out, all of it chopped up to old beef. I'll meet without you. Your mother wants to arrange cacophony, rebark skin trees. We'll build things bizarre, fantastic, delight in their crash. Despite the jets and cargo planes drilling overhead, our bat dog never barked. She slept facing the baby's door, pinched teething wafers between her teeth. My incessant worry is meaning-making, broken sheets of chocolate bark smeared on sheets across our bodies and faces in every crease. Dear daughter, who you are now, you express sadness each time I bark. Your intelligence surpasses mine. Breathe, you say, count, and don't seethe. Thanks. I'm John Melillo. I'm also on the POG board, and I have the pleasure of introducing our visiting poet and beyond, Poet Plus, <laughs> Dow Strong. So, echo is the reflection and repetition of sound in space and time. It simultaneously orients us and disorients us. The micro returns of sound around us make us feel at home in a space, or at least that we can make sense of it, that we know we are present within it. Audio engineers call this room tone, and it's the different little repetitions of sound that set us within a particular space. So you can, you can try to listen to that now, try to listen to the, the room tone. That's to say, the sense of the container in which we are all here together. Or better, <laughs> when you walk out, you'll hear that difference. Right between the ambiance. We know when we're in a room and when we're outside. We know we're in one room and not another room. You know where you are. When we remove these reverberations, when we enter into an anechoic chamber, say, and we get our ears checked, as just happened to me a couple weeks ago, there's a strange displacement. It's like we're floating in space. We're ungrounded by the sound wash that's around us. We feel we're lost. But the same thing happens when there's too much echo, when we enter a large cave or the abandoned construction of a nuclear reactor, as presented on the cover of Strong's most recent book, Instrument. Then, suddenly, we're in those, when we're in those kinds of spaces, the echo returns to us personified, far enough along to sing with, maybe, or to be haunted by. We hear a plurality in place of singularity, another self floating alongside us. I say all this because Dowstrom's work in, invites a meditation on echo. As poet, songwriter, folk ambient country singer, installation artist, designer, video artist, and beyond, Dow moves within reverberant echoes, their homeliness and strangeness, their presence and ghostly recall. In a series of multidisciplinary hybrid works, including, as I said, Instrument from 2020, Strong uses echo as sound, form, and written trace to search the between spaces of identity and history, of travel and migration. Dow Strong was born in Vietnam, grew up in the Sierra Nevada foothills of Northern California, and now lives in Portland, Oregon. In addition to instrument, Strong is also the author of a bilingual poetry art book, You Will Always Be Someone from Somewhere Else, a hybrid form memoir, We Were Meant to Be a Gentle People, and, uh, along with a song cycle, East West, and two books of fiction, The Gentle Order of Girls and Boys and Grassroof Tin Roof. She also most recently has an album entitled Redux, which is a revisiting of old songs from her days as a performer in the Austin country music scene. Strom is a founding member of two collaborative art projects, She Who Has No Masters, a collective of women writers of the Vietnamese diaspora, and D. Cannon, 
a literary plus social art plus publishing project highlighting books and works of writers by color. And emerging from that, she has a new edited collection, um, A Mouth Holds Many Things, which will be coming out with phonograph editions um, this spring. Strom's collaborator and fellow collective member, Vicky Now, says of instrument, her music-torn, multi-textual, multi-vocal, genre-bending work is an exquisite compendium of pre- and post-war memories and moments, a magnificent palace of diction and intuition where her sonic soul begs the most obvious question. Is the moon refugee like me? So there are more questions. Where and when does the traveler find home or escape it? Where and when does the echo haunt and hold us? And when do we sing with it? Dalstrom's work echoes within these questions. Please join me in welcoming Dalstrom. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, that was really wonderful. And um, yeah, and just, um, it's really interesting to hear like you with your background in sound and studies like talk about echo and um, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel really glad to be here. Um, thank you, Bojan, for sharing this space with me. Um, those poems were amazing. And um, I'm envious of the, the classical training and the knowing too much. <laughs> um, I work with as much as I know. Um, I'm always, always open to learning more um, about these forms. Uh, let's see. Um, so I thought I would do a little mix of things um, and I'll start with showing a video and then I'll do some pieces from Instrument Traveler's Ode and some of it will involve some singing and sound and also reading poems and I'll try to guide us through that, um, see if it makes sense. I'm going to start with showing a video of a poem that I talked about a little bit in the, the class visit. Um, it was written as a public art commission, so it actually lives as an installation in Portland, Oregon, on the side of a building, a metal panel. So it was designed and written to be like a physical manifestation, and you'll see some images of it. Um, and I collaborated with Vicky Now, who is also a, a Oh, one of my collaborators in the She Who Has No Masters Collective um, with the Vietnamese translation. So I edited a video version of it together with both of the voices, so you'll get to see how they interact. Um, and I'll start there, and then I'll move into some pieces from instrument. We breathe, and breathing is an asynchronous music. Everybody needs the air. We breathe, and breathing is an asynchronous music. Yet, everybody needs the air. We are riven, tender, and tender riven. Asked to know here our roots, we dove into the revolving polyphonic tender timber ether. My response is to sing to the inevitable terror, shake the terrible, terrific air, harness the ineluctable. I fill the rift with river. I feel the rift with river. Mình thở và sự thở là một à đồng nhạc tuy nhiên ai cũng cần không khí. Mình đinh tán âu yếm và âu yếm Tán đinh Hỏi để biết Nghe nguồn gốc của mình Mình 
nhảy vào quay vòng đa âm âu yếm đà hóa ê the phản ứng của tôi là cho đến nỗi kinh hoàng không thể tránh khỏi rung chuyển sự khủng khiếp tuyệt vời không khí khai thác sự không tránh khỏi tôi đắp rạn nứt với con sông tôi cảm giác rạn nứt với con sông we breathe a breathing is mình thở và sự thở an asynchronous music là à, một đồng nhạc every body ai cũng cần không thể yet the air needs tuy nhiên không khí cần một a music breathing nhạc thở và and we đồng thở synchronous breathe một every body người là là mỗi nhạc một is every hình a body sự thở cần is every body là mỗi người a synchronous đồng bộ And yet, và tuy nhiên mình every air mỗi không khí mình nhà needs cần a synchronous ở đồng cơ thể thở we the air mình không khí music nhạc body cơ thể needs breathe cần thở breathing sự thở is là yet tuy nhiên the một and get and và The air, yet, không khí, tuy nhiên, is every body. Là mỗi người một a breathing music. Nhạc thở and và mình thở một đồng bộ. Synchronous. Mỗi nhạc cần một every music needs cơ thể a body đồng bộ. Synchronous. Mỗi không khí cần một every air needs nhạc thở a breathing music mình không khí we the air nhạc music cơ thể body cần thở breathe sự breathing là is tuy nhiên yet một the and, and, và and breathing is sự thở là sự thở is, là sự thở breathing is là and và sự thở là sự thở là sự thở là và My response is to say So I'm going to move into um, I was going to do a version of Traveler's Ode, which is um, a song. I call it a song poem. Um, uh, there is a form of Vietnamese poetry, folk poetry, called Ca Sao, which is song poetry. Um, I am not versed on it, but the idea of a song poem was sort of what I was playing with with this. And these themes of travel are big part of these songs and this, this book. I'm going to start down here.
I was going to read a poem, but it's sort of a poem made up of fragments, and um, I don't really write like single poems. Like I write fragments and I write long poems, <laughs> and the fragments connect. So, but this is one that John mentioned in the intro, or a line from it. Is the moon refugee like me? Is the earth incomplete? I've always had a thing for gathering rocks from shores. Sometimes we use the word liquefy to describe the desire of a violence so conscriptive it returns the body to states of permeability. So too was I born of debris, home, cold, from the scattering, a dark landing. Eventually, liquid hardens when cooled, fire dies when deprived oxygen. I don't trust human memory being what it is. Is the moon refugee, past liquid, broken twin, combustible debris, stolen orbit, aberrant satellite, pre-binary antecedent, inner sanctum, eyeless sensory mirror missioned, or home itself, precedent, unconsciousness, nesting, sedent, refusal. Is the moon refugee or refuge or refuse us? We refuse to refuse human memory being what it is, it slips. Is the moon refugee or refuge? Is the sun a holder of the earth, a holder back? I stood down wound, down heart, en route. Do you believe in the sound it takes to, it takes us to where I am standing en route, down wound. To live, to leave, to leave, to live, we left. Leaving leaves behind, leaves through, we left, through the east gate. We left leaves, or the shadows of, dancing with light, on the ground. Is this living, is leaving living, is living leaving? To me, endemism means you never left, no one ever carried any part of you away. I have read about the caves so large they manufacture their own clouds. No one who travels can be endemic. Don't be fooled by what you believe must have light to live. And I'm going to read one more poem. This is one of the poems that actually has a, a title. Um, it's called Cavities. It's actually a shorter one. Um, and uh, this is sort of a words inside of words type of poem for me. To protect the me in muse, I heed the teacher who points out the dive in divine. To remember requires allowing the self-playing pianos to be triggered by ghost events. Keys stay in it, but sometimes I just don't. The past is an exhaustion. The past is demarcation. No container like a song to hold the ever echoic. I rose like a chamber of light in a jelly skeleton, with nerves all alive and no central processing system, because my whole body found the ache in the chamber, the tiny cities inside cavities interlocked with caves, a far off music in communiques, hard heard.
So I'm going to play a song here, and it has some different parts. Um, the song and the, the sample that I'm going to play are another uh, experiment in fragmentation, and you'll see also the video that goes with this. Um, yeah. I spent a lot of hours playing with brackets. <laughs> I will say. You will always be someone from somewhere else. This is the design flaw of water. The sea see, but then the water comes back in the form of tears, rain, this is the wound we came out of. So much that we forget, I forget that in another time we knew each other, importantly, I forget the day I dawned without time, without thought, and I stood watching the sun, reading the sky. I forget there were breachers and watchers and seers. I forget there were hunters and helpers. I forget there were rivers that were our friends and our meeting places. I forget there were markers once to tell us how far we'd come. And then somewhere along the way, they just stopped, meaning we've gone further than any of us had ever gone before. That 
the earth could use and then refuse and the earth could use and then refuse you completed this mission Lost in your love for the tools of the trade. Oh, textual representations of the song that appear in the instrument. Part of another ex just experiment with fragments um, and the, the chopping up of this vocal line and turning it into a texture was something that happened kind of Accidentally, um, but these visual textual um, versions came after I had made the audio version of the song. So actually I could play another song or I could show another video <laughs> or I mean you know like time wise I, I I'm always gonna just play a song that's actually an old traditional song um, and 
I play it in this context. I've played it for years. It's an old traditional folk gospel tune, but I like to, I've sort of taken it into the context of diaspora songs, which is another exploration that I've, I'm doing also with some other songwriter friends, but just, um, but this is, it's I Am a Poor Wayfaring Stranger, which is a traditional gospel tune, and um, the themes of exile really resonated with me when I discovered this music, so um, I can play that. Okay, talk about this <laughs> next <time. laughs> I don't know why there is this little gear bouncing around on my computer. <laughs> Adds to the performance. <laughs> I am a poor, wayfaring stranger, traveling through this world of woe, and there's no sickness, no toil or danger in the bright world. She shed her precious 
This is the, the title, just ignore that. <laughs> um, wading into a new decade, 10 miles of jungle, 20 plus river crossings, one night in a cave, chimes at the altar of the highway of horror, then lunch by the sea 45 years after the exodus. Um, I made a return trip to Vietnam in January 2020, right, right before the pandemic happened. And I wanted to visit a particular area um, in central Vietnam. It's, there's a cave system there called the Phong Nha Caves. Um, and there, there's, there's a lot of caves there. And then there's like one cave that's purported to be like the world's largest cave. Um, and I was really fascinated by this area because of those caves, like just thinking about, you know, just caves as a metaphor, but for interiority, things that are buried. and. Um, but I also wanted to re visit this area because there's there's an episode that happened in um, 1972 that my parents have talked about, their generation has talked about. Um, um, they call it Highway of Horror. It was an event where there were refugees fleeing on the highway south, um, and they were shelled by the Viet Cong, like on this patch of highway between two bridges. and. Um, and, and then the, the, the area was closed and the bodies were left on, in that, that area. Um, and the reason it's significant for me, I mean, it's significant for a lot of reasons, but my parents were the publishers of a newspaper and the press was like some of the first to come to this area and they, they dubbed it the Highway of Horror and there was this effort to bury the bodies that the newspaper was involved in. Um, and this was like my, you know, the time of my parents' relationship, like also around the time that I was like conceived or, you know, nine months before I was born. So it sort of has that personal collective, intersection of personal and collective histories. Um, so I wanted to go and visit these sites. There is a memorial on the side of the highway. Um, there's, you, you can't find any evidence of these things, which is part of, you know, um, the, like it's, it's, it's also an event that's erased in the histories, like it's not talked about in the official history of Vietnam and definitely not significant enough um, history of conflict amid of like all the things that happened during the Vietnam War to be, you know, registered in American mil military history. With, so um, I, I went to this area and I hiked to a cave and um, just but it was just a two-day hike, so I hiked through a jungle, and um, there were some sounds of water that I collected, and some photographs that are actually in the book, and I wrote more lyric essays about just um, some of that experience. I, I want to say that return is not a simple subject. I feel like it's like, return is not a simple catharsis, and you, it, I think of it as like this complete, like this continual cyclical thing, um, and I don't know that connection or reconnection is like a really easy thing to achieve going back to the land or to the people. Um, but this is something of what I made, or just some sounds I took from that, and some of those sounds are actually like in the layers of this, like these sounds are actually in the song. I don't know if you'll hear them. And then there's and I I'll play with the video.
Thank you. from my You Will Always Be Someone from Somewhere Else book. Um, and so it's, it is reflecting on just that initial cataclysm and separation. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I continue to play with water, it, it, it's obviously, um, to, you know, like it's, it's probably pretty saturated or just, you know, like <laughs> the metaphor has been like overdone. Um, but I'm still playing with it and Water, like I, 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 as the piece that you know, I read for the foreword um, of the uh, for the anthology. That a mouth holds many things. Like uh, there's a moment where I'd say, you know, um, if I can you know, name my genre, I would I would call it ocean. Um, so I think it has to do with the fluidity and the unconscious and just. I love you know. that that yeah, the design thought water can then translate it as nation. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, that's. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot. And, and I guess the word comes from like the idea that water and land make for a good home. Like a homeland is like, you know, the place where water and land comes together. But it, yeah, it's, so it's, it's just, yeah, it has that double meaning. Yeah, the, the, to follow up on that, the, the, the sort of kind of really wonderful sort of delicate irony in that phrase, I mean, it's so striking, the design flow of water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was a nuclear reactor, but the, 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 that piece, it, it feels just completely like an elegy for everything that exists, you know. And then at the very end, with the wayfaring stranger and then the last piece, there's this very moving kind of energy of desire and transformation mm -hmm. and rejuvenation, you know. Mm -hmm. So the, all that sort of lurking in the, the odd wit of the design flow of water, you know. So mm -hmm. just, I don't know if that makes any sense, but thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah, cooling towers are like the, like that structure was a cooling tower and that involves water. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a structure that's supposed to cool the water that's part of generating the nuclear power. So. I was just thinking about um, how elemental your, your work seems to be. You know, we started mm -hmm. with ether, mm -hmm. and then we moved to water. Mm -hmm. and, but there's um, a fair amount of attention to the body, to earth, to the grounding. So I wonder if there's any fire. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Like I haven't. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. I have to think about if I have fire motifs. Yeah. Yeah. I am a fire sign, but I have a lot of water. My moon's in, in Pisces. Uh, if that means anything. <laughs> 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 and then Bojan, I Let me see if I can try to articulate this. Um, can you talk about the way that the First of all, I'm curious about the haiku and the guzzle, how they came together. But then can we talk a bit about um, syllables? Because you mm -hmm. talked about you know, maybe getting five or seven syllables a day. And so there's something about the temporal here, this incremental accumulation of language, of line. I wonder if you could. Oh, it is on. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anywhere you want to. Yeah, I mean, 
mean, um, you may not even need it. Yes, yeah, turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, like all, all these are happy accidents for me, you know. Um, I just read a lot, you know. Sometimes I just. And I've been reading a lot of haiku for whatever reason. Um, I've been reading a lot of Richard Wright's haikus. There are like 800 plus haiku. Um, and I like those because they're, you know, they're like a more modern uh, sensibility, a black American sensibility. Um, so there's different like elements of racial tension all built up in these haikus, right? And you read someone like Basho or like Kobayashi Issa or Busson, who's my favorite. Very different. Um, you know, Busson was a painter or a, an artist as well, so there's like um, a different attention to image. So I, that's what drew me to the haiku. Uh, the hustle, of course, was the homework. Um, and because I'm, a, you know, I've been playing music since I was like five years old. Um, I wanted to be a rock star before I wanted to be a poet or a writer. Like, that was the last thing I thought I wanted to be. Um, but I wasn't good in bands because I was the only one who like practiced um, and uh, was on time and like I you know very type A. Um, I think it comes from trauma, like you know you over control everything. So um, didn't work out for me. So um, you know all music is is just counting, like one two three four one two three four five six seven. Um, so I it. it I think it all came, like I stopped playing music for a long time, a lot of my friends passed away recently who I used to play with, so that kind of gave me an aversion to the music, uh, and all that music was tied up in addiction, you know, we'd be, get, we'd be so fucked up, you know, playing music, and, you know, uh, <laughs> also why the projects never went anywhere, because we were all addicts, um, and so part of... All this came, it was just like, um, I started learning songs again, so I think you know, I compose on my own, but I was like, I need to, I don't want to just keep making, you know, I want to, I need community, but like, I don't want to go find a band or something, or like, I'm not going to go join a jazz quartet or something, which is what I wanted to do. Um, so, I just started learning songs that my friends liked. Uh, especially ones who pass, like Cam FDM songs, a lot of Tool songs, uh, Slayer songs, Metallica, stuff like that. And so doing that, it was just like, um, I, I got really attuned to the process of learning a song. So it's first like, and I can read music, so I'd find the sheet music, because that's a different sort of visual for me, um, something to play with. I really love the way it looks, even if I don't completely understand all the transitions and key changes that happen anymore. Um, so I was like, this is all like incremental, right? This is all fragmented. Really, like music is, a, is like, is a fragmentation that has come together by a composer, right? Because if you, even if you look at Bach or something, they're all like, if you take it apart, there are all these different fragments that happen in different registers, which makes his music so... I have, I have a bunch of classical music friends, and they're like, there's Bach, and there's the rest of the music, right? <laughs> and so, like, it, you know, they, all these registers and sounds um, happen in this soundscape, and they, like, reach you at a different emotional level. So I was like, can't do that in poetry, because you're just one person reading a poem, so the sound quality doesn't... Um, transfer or uh, translate. So I was like, well, how, how, what if I did, you know, combine forms or something? So that's how it all started to come together. And then again, the process of learning a song is like, I'm going to learn one bar at a time. You know, like it's taken me a month to learn this tool song. Um, I mean, the first like quarter of it, because uh, it's just a bunch of arpeggios and weird fingering. So like, I started getting really a, like, what, what does this mean? What, how do I translate this into writing? Because this is really what I'm interested in. This is really what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about whatever I'm supposed to lecture about the, like tomorrow, right? I want to, like, this is where my brain is. Um, how do I keep enacting this process? Um, most of the fragmentation is just comes from being a parent 
and you know being super busy um, sometimes I only get to write five syllables a day or that's all the brain power I have like it's usually right the last thing I do before going to sleep is I sit with my notebook and since I'm writing in a haiku and then that haiku becomes amplified by the hustle and then the hustle becomes amplified by the next sort of like what's the next refrain um, you know, in that moment, I'm just like, I got my five syllables, okay, tomorrow I'll do seven, tomorrow I'll do five, five, seven, five, five, seven, five, seven. Like, that's just been how I've been existing for the past, like, year and a half. Um, and it's also like, I just don't like writing anymore. <laughs> I gotta keep one, like, pinky toe in. <laughs> so, uh, but now I'll come back to writing. Now I'm writing another book of short stories um, and a novel. I'm working on it. I'll come back to the novel, but... Um, I just don't have the time, physical or emotional energy to write more than like five syllables. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. And what about the refrain? Where does it come from? Do you have a sense? Nope. No. <laughs> it changes sometimes, and then I have to go back and be like, oh shit, I got it. <laughs> and the refrain can't be too heavy, right? Because that last part of the hustle is the five syllables. So, yeah. like, you could have like a six, C, eight, and you're like, shit, that's like my, what am I going to do with that? And that's a challenge too, it's like, I'm going to make this work, you know, but what's the one syllable word before that, that makes that little part work? Do, do we have one last question before we call it? Yes. Um, when you were talking about like, I think like negative capability and like anticipation, being in this like in between space, both for both um, poets and um, performers and fragmentation. So maybe this is a question for both. What's your favorite Metallica song? Ride the Lightning. Yeah. My favorite album. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Then they sold out after that. <laughs> uh, no Injustice for All for you? Huh? Actually, I do really like Injustice for All because there's no bass. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I have an answer for that. <laughs> if you don't have a favorite Metallica song, is there like a folk song? I mean, oh you just gosh. that would. What was like a folk song that sort of maybe first got you singing that this kind of? Well, that I am a poor reader, mm -hmm. stranger is one, one of those yeah. that like really like spoke to me. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a big Gillian Welch fan. I like that 14 minute I Dream a Highway song. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's mm -hmm. something going on there. Yeah. Okay. Do you like Townsend's Sounds? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>